So welcome to worship this morning. And those of you um, who are joining us at this moment uh, during the day, uh, we hope that you are very much present with us as we hold you in our hearts and prayers as well as those we bring in our hearts and minds into this holy place this morning. There are some prayer intentions on the back of the pew sheet and I encourage you to bear in mind those who were to have been married this weekend, particularly Zoe and Matthew in our own uh, benefits. Uh, please remember those whose plans uh, in their lives have been postponed and it's not just about holiday, it's also about changing work patterns and the like as well. So those intentions are on the back of the pew sheet, so lift them up in your prayers throughout the week, please. So let us be still for a moment as we come together in this sacred space to worship and bring before God those whom we hold in our hearts, those concerns in our own lives that we wish to bring before God, and perhaps in the silence too, listen to his no small voice. Let us be still. The Lord is here. We come seeking forgiveness for all we have failed to be and do as members of Christ's body. Let us call to mind those things for which we seek God's forgiveness and the forgiveness of others. God, there is forgiveness, and so we say, loving and all-seeing God, forgive us where we have failed to support one another and to be what we claim to be. Forgive us where we have failed to serve you and where our thoughts and actions have been contrary to your laws. We ask for your pardon. God forgives us be at peace. Let us pray. O God, our mystery, you bring us to life. Call us to freedom and move between us with love. May we so participate in your dance of Trinity that our lives may resonate with you, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. 
and her daughter was healed from that hour. May your word, word live in us. And in the spirit of the Lord. I guess if there was to be a title to the homily on that gospel, it would be Heavens Above, the gospel has gone to the dogs. And perhaps that was the essence of what the disciples thought, as Jesus said to the Canaanite woman, O woman, great is your faith. For a few moments earlier, they had been, uh, they had been, had employed it. Him. The disciples had implored him to send away this woman who was squawking after them. Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. Jesus and his disciples had just withdrawn away from a lively questioning from the Pharisees concerning the washing of hands and defiled, undefiled food. And now, on their way towards Galilee, they entered into the land of the Canaanites, the land where Jews would not interact with its people, the land where this Syro-Phoenician woman who approached Jesus should have been two metres apart from him, and certainly not called out to him, a Jewish man. And if you want to know why, read the story of Noah after the flood had subsided. We can make all sorts of excuses, all the excuses why Jesus give our Sunday school teaching and hymns, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, fit this account for the mo this moment in his life and ministry. But let me assure you, the excuses won't fit. The excuses to make Jesus fit our Sunday school teaching and hymns won't fit. Jesus is fully human. Tears and smiles like us, he knew. As well as tiredness, short-temperedness. As well as being able to be open to new insights, new learning, new understanding. The conversation with the Canaanite woman is sharp. The intent is clear. From Jesus' point of view, perhaps to do as the disciples wish, send this squawking woman away. The woman's intent is clear. She needs help. She needs to save her daughter from illness. I hope you noticed that Jesus was changed in that encounter. He chose to listen to someone whom others would have ignored and he chose to act with compassion in a situation in which no one would have faulted him for moving on. He's choosing to listen and to heal. To change his mind when doing so would cost him the honour in the sight of others. Jesus acted in, according to the limited view of his mission, and certainly in his disciples' view in this gospel. That is, his mission was only to the house of Israel. And the mother responds according to a desperate need outside of that limited view. And Jesus calls it faith. It is a moment of jarring reality as Jesus' understanding of his mission, his purpose in life is changed. We all visit Tyre and Sidon from time to time, don't we? You know the places and the people. The people who cry out to us for help from our own villages and further afield. And those to whom the church's door presents a demanding threshold which they think they are not worthy to cross. The land of Tyre and Sidon, which is the Covid land of social distancing, 
mask wearing of, and of caution and suspicion of each and every stranger is a land becoming familiar. It is a land of change for each of us and for church. The priest and author Barbara Brown Taylor puts it this way, Jesus preached the coming of the kingdom, but it was the church that came. All these year, years later, the way many of us are doing church is broken, and we know it, even if we do not know what to do about it. We proclaim the priesthood of all believers while we continue with hierarchical clergy, liturgy, and architecture. We follow the Lord who challenged the religious and political institutions of his time while we fund and defend our own. We speak and sing of divine transformation while we do everything in our power to maintain our equilibrium. If redeeming things continue to happen to us in spite of these deep contradictions in our life together, then, Barbara Brown Taylor writes, I think that is because God is faithful even when we are not. This is the kind of conversation about being church and about being Christian in the world we are to engage with now. And now, when we know in this benefice, probably, well, if we were going out live this morning, right now, there's a chance that there'd be another 200 people listening alongside us this morning online. This is exactly the kind of jarring reality that Jesus encountered when he went to Tyre and Sidon. Faith showed up when he didn't expect it. Goodness showed up. Courage showed up. Faith showed up outside the walls of the church. Outside the walls where it was expected to be. And Jesus was different because of it. Tyre and Sidon are for us not that far away, and the Canaanite woman is no stranger. She's our daughter or son who volunteers in her community. She is our neighbour who cares for the other. She is the co-worker who yearns to find meaning in her work and yearns to understand her vocation. She is the mother or father of two who is right now at Costa this morning taking a breather who cares deeply about the world that their children will inherit someday when theirs is gone. What surprised Jesus was that when he went far from his spiritual home, it was not who he encountered, but what he found. He found faith. Persistent, passionate, determined faith. And I think he was changed by it. Woman, great is your faith. And may it be so for you, for me, and for the church in this changing world. Before we share our intercessions, we just be still for a moment. Lord of all, you who taught us to pray, we give thanks that we are gathered together and can pray. We pray for our world. We ask for your healing love 
on all places where humanity is suffering. On the people of Yemen, trapped in so many years of war, now made so much worse by terrorism. On the people of Beirut, their city torn apart by the huge explosion last week. We pray for the sick and the injured, for the homeless, for those trying to restore hospitals, bring in food, and rebuild communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious. In this week of the 75th anniversary of VJ Day, we pray for all victims of war. Those few people still who fought in the Far East and whose lives have been changed by their experience. And we pray that all wars Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear We pray for our own country, especially this week, its young people, those with their futures made so uncertain and their hard work seemingly disregarded by the confusion they are now faced with. May those making life-changing decisions be filled with a spirit of humanity and compassion. May the doors stay open for our young people to let them be the best they possibly can. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious you. Pray for those involved in accidents this week, particularly the train derailment in Scotland and Friday's tragedy on the A30 at Liverpool. Strengthen all those involved, the injured, the witnesses, those in the emergency service, comfort the bereaved, and take those who die into your eternal care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask your love and kindness on our own community here in Morlegan, Mount, and St. Mary. We pray for those who are sick, for Chris, for Luke, for Pat, for Ross, and for all those struggling with their health, both physical and mental. We hold in our hearts all those in residential care, Bridget, Betty, Mary, Arthur, and Tony, and all those who care for them. Comfort those who mourn, and we commit to your eternal care all those drawing close to the end of their lives. Lord, hear us. Above all, gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for our lives and all that we have in this world and the assurance of your eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious Share a 
use, and it's a matter of catching one another's eyes because we can see the smile on the things, but I'm sure we can see as people that we convey to one another God's peace and blessing. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I will be with you. Greet one another with a twinkle of peace. The Lord is here. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Father, of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light, with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. Send your Spirit upon us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food 
offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive them trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power. Gifts of God for the people.
eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken. You have fed us at the table of life and truth. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ. sends us out, not with crumbs, but with an invitation to come and sit at his table and to invite others to join him. Say to the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted support those in need. Give honour to all. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of God in the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our worship has ended, our service begins. Go.